a couple of weeks ago in New Orleans, you came within a couple of points of beating this team. What was the difference between that game and tonight's game? Well, you know, one difference we did have KP that game didn't have her. To, I, I think, I think, I think that learning late last night, and some didn't even learn until today, game day, that KP was done for the season. You know, I, I definitely think it affected our team. We didn't have a chance to. Um, we didn't have a chance to uh, really adjust. Or I mean, you think about it, we played. You know, started off the game with three post players. Um, somebody like Armani Dugar hadn't played hardly at all this year. Ends up playing, I believe, it was 21 minutes. And you know, we just played really different combinations. And I, I, I'll tell you, one of the hardest things that's been is KP, Keeley, and Gabby have not practiced all week. Now those are three of our, sometimes three of our starting guards. Sometimes we, you know, we've, we've started all three of those at times. And when you, have, when you have a team that your people who you rely on and play a lot of minutes and they can't practice, and then they play, it's really hard to get that chemistry. It's really hard to get that flow and that rhythm and you're, it's like you're all over the place and you see it, you see it today. And, and you know, Gabby uh, had she didn't play against Tulsa, had a concussion, and you know she was really non-existent today. So, you know, we didn't have KP. To me, we didn't really have Gabby today, and I think I think that hurt us. I think Tulane keep more on Destiny. You know, Destiny had a good game against Tulane, uh, and you know, teams are going to key on her. You mentioned the absence of KP, and you've talked all year about how you ask her to do so many different things. Where's the biggest difference, or the biggest? area in which her absence is felt? Defensively. She'll, she always guards the best player. Uh, or, you know, best, quickest player, the toughest player to player, you know, especially a go-to player type. She's, she knows how to shut down players. And, you know, that's a, that's a part of the game that's not listed in the stat book. It's, it's just something that you see and know. And, and you always have that, that defensive presence, you know, just like when you have a defensive presence in the lane. And I think that's probably the, the biggest area. The other area, she is a player that can get to the rim. And, um, you know, we missed that a little bit today, a lot today. With, with Perry out of the lineup, with Gabrielle Wilkins still feeling the effects of, of uh, her concussion, as you said, you went with three post players. What did you see in that combination? Did you see anything you, that you liked in that combination early on? Not really. Because, and I'm going to tell you why, because we played, we had to play zone, and they came out and hit like three threes. So that wasn't, you know, that didn't last long. And, uh, you know, offensively it takes away from our ball handling. And, and you yeah, know, I thought, I thought if Tulane came out and maybe missed some of those shots, it would have been good, but they didn't. And so it didn't, you know, it didn't really help us. So we had to quickly put a well, and plus Steph got like two fouls in three minutes, three or four minutes. So, you know, that hurt us a little bit. She's got to learn to play the game without fouling. You obviously had to play some new faces in the backcourt. Morgan Bolton has played a lot for you this year, but she and Michaela Reese both gave you career highs tonight. Both of them gave you three three-pointers each. Um, what did you think of their performances overall? Well, it, it was nice to see him put the ball in the hole um, because our point guards didn't, you know, need to score. But I, I, really, I really need Mo to cut down on her mistakes. You know, she, she's got to understand that she is our point guard. She needs to understand her role. Uh, you know, if, if, if some points come with it, that's great, but that's not her, you know, her first. I want her to look. She can't shoot the three. I want her to look for the three. It's just that sometimes when she does penetrate, she gets herself in trouble. She's so small where she can't get herself out of trouble. And she, she also at times gets herself caught in trapping situations. But there were times where she got herself caught in trapping situations where it wasn't always her fault. We didn't have the release factor there, the ball reversal or, you know, a sideline flash. You mentioned Stephanie Collins got into some foul trouble early, but at, at most of the game you had her, Alicia, Destiny, Heisman Cray, uh, you had three or four different posts who rotated in and out of there. With that size, are you surprised that Tulane had a rebound advantage of seven? Uh, no, but they took a lot of three, a lot of threes, a lot of outside shots even, and there's a lot of rebound offensive. They got a lot of long rebounds. You know, there were rebounds that we actually had pretty good position, but they were long rebounds. And, you know, sometimes you can have the best position, you can block out, but you're going to give up, you're going to give up some. You know, I, I was not happy with the fact, um, uh, you know, that, well, they averaged 
I think, what does that say, 30? How many did they get? 33? 33, 33 mm -hmm. rebounds they average. I want to say 39 rebounds a game. I mean, we only had 26. We averaged like 43 rebounds a game. So obviously there wasn't a lot of uh, rebounding going on. I mean, that's, that's, a low, that's a low combination total of rebounds right there. You know, 30-something and, and 26. But, we, you know, we still had 12 offensive rebounds. I guess if you're shooting 37 uh, percent, you should. In the first part of the season, you talked about the Froling sisters needing to adjust to the college game, adjust to the, the way the game is called here. Stephanie Collins arrived basically in January. How far behind is she, and how's she doing in terms of making that same adjustment and starting to catch up to her teammates? Well, she's she she's playing catch up. All she'll play catch up the rest of the year. She missed all the teaching. That's the part that really hurts her defensive teaching. As you see, she, she sometimes um, doesn't understand always the positioning. It doesn't understand the way they call it here. Obviously, it's, uh, the game is officiated differently in, in Australia. And, and, you know, they have to, I think it's probably called maybe a little looser there. And, uh, you know, she's still trying to learn where she should be in a press offense. I mean, heck, I put her in the middle of our press offense today to be a, a release factor uh, because she's such a big target in the middle because our guards, I felt like they were hiding, so we put her in the middle. But she's still learning, uh, you know, she's still learning things, but she missed the most important part, and that's the lead-up to what we're doing. That's the lead-up. That's the teaching. That's the, the fundamentals. And... And you know, just even how to to forearm your opponent, and push them out out of the lane type of. It's it just she she comes in and every day, I mean, heck, she just learned the other day that she couldn't understand at Tulsa why I took her out so quickly. Uh, but once again, three minutes, she had two fouls. Well, my rule is for the most part, you're going to sit that half, uh, unless you know, unless for whatever reason I decide to put you back in. You mentioned Armani Degar played 21 minutes. Didn't score, but she had four assists to just one turnover and a couple of steals. How pleased were you with her as, in a backup role? Well, considering she she has not played a lot, uh, I, I thought I thought she saw the floor really well. I thought she made some good passes. I um, I talked with her today individually and brought her in and, and just said, listen, you know, with KP's situation, this is an opportunity for you because I'm going to play you. And I wanted her to have that mentality going into film and going in. Uh, to the scouting report and going into the game because sometimes when you're used to not playing much you know you're human you may not prepare in the same manner or detail I mean I it, it shouldn't be that way but it is and so I wanted to make sure she was ready the biggest thing I told her this is what's what has played against her is when she go I told her when you go in let the game come to you don't try and make risky passes don't take crazy shots and you know, sometimes when kids get in a game and they don't play much, they try and do too much and it really works against them. She, when she went in the first time, she played her role, and that was a key. You know, I, I, I think, think she'll be more prepared the next time. Um, you know, be, I'd like to see her hit a couple shots. Keely Froling went through a stretch where her shot wasn't necessarily falling. Tonight she gives you 10 points and six rebounds. How nice was it to see her just get back in the scoring column, get in double digits, and what will that do for her confidence going forward? I, I think we talked about that. I think she had a very efficient game. You know, she had four offensive rebounds. Uh, she is a good offensive rebounder. You know, she seemed confident in her shot. She didn't rush it. Uh, you know, she, uh, she got herself a, a three-point look, uh, got herself to the free throw line, and, um, you know, like I say, the four assist is, is huge as well. And, and um you know, I thought I thought she played a really, really solid game. Good. Mm -hmm.